What's going on guys? This is probably the craziest e-bike I've built so far. We have a motor dimmer or a light dimmer. This is 120 volts. So what am I gonna do with that? How can it work on an e-bike? Well, inside of the crate here, we have the EB55 power station. So the power station is then connected to the dimmer. So what are we using as a motor? Electric chainsaw, of course. Why not? <laughs> So I found this old electric chainsaw and I thought, well, it's pretty heavy duty how it's built. And I thought, well, maybe I could just put a pinion right onto the chainsaw and then use it for a bike. So I made a homemade 410 pinion and I put that right onto the chainsaw. And then I've just taken a sprocket from another bike, the one that's here on our pedal. So I cut that to size, weld it on a piece of eighth inch plate, uh, and then I've drilled four holes. So it's just bolted to a regular 410 freewheel sprocket. So the freewheel sprocket is welded onto the hub. sprockets on the right way and then we have it true so that it doesn't wobble like this and I've ground down the hub and got it down as deep as I can. It's on there pretty good and we're gonna have to put a little oil and burned all the grease out but still grease in there. Try not to get any weld on the bearing surface. Uh, I do that with all my e-bikes because I don't want to lose any of my gears and I want to keep the motor on the other side of course where our pedals are where our pedal gears are we want it on the other side. Of course you have to be able to weld or you can get someone to weld that onto your hub for you. It's not that difficult to do so I just hit the switch here the motor's kicked in and then just turn up our controller. So I don't like to trick anyone and pretend like it worked and it didn't, but clearly you can see it is working. It's not super fast. We need a bigger inverter. If we had a, if I had a 1500 watt inverter connected to this, I'd like to see what it would do. So you can put a freewheel sprocket on as, a, as your pinion, but you'd have to mount then this sprocket to, right to the hub. So again, you're gonna weld again. So the other option is, is to attach it to the spokes. Now that's the worst option. Uh, I think they call them spoke rippers. So the problem with that is chain is always going to be turning. Chainsaw power bike. That's moving now, but I think we're going downhill a little bit. The EB55 is not enough really to power this motor. This is a, it, it is a 10 amp motor. So it's way over the rating. I really need about 1200 watts to power that motor. All right guys, so how did I put all this together? Well, I built some brackets and mounts to mount the chainsaw motor on here. I've just taken some scrap angle iron and I've cut them into random. When I build things, I just build them randomly. I don't actually design anything. I just sort of grab a couple chunks of scrap metal and I sort of just put them onto the bike and, you know, try to figure it out that way. And then I just cut it up and weld it on. So that's how my brain works. I don't really design anything on paper. I just design it as I go. So this is how it worked out. It was all made in the moment.
So this motor can run on AC or DC. It's a universal motor. It does not have permanent magnets. It's like your drill, skill saw, and they're very powerful, but they do need to run at higher RPMs, and they're not as easily controlled as a DC motor. So I figured that I'd give it a shot anyway and see if we can make this work. So I could connect this to a PWM motor controller and run this on DC, but I need to find a motor controller that could run on about 90 or 100 volts. So I haven't found one yet. 48 volts, it's not gonna be enough really to drive this motor because the windings inside this motor are way thinner than the windings that you'd have in a lower voltage motor. So there's a lot more, lot thinner wire and a lot more turns. There's an advantage for that because less current, but you need more voltage. Pick it up speed. <laughs> All right, so I'm using the power station for now an e-bike, but it's sort of an experiment. Now this, everything on the channel is experimental. This is just science. I'm showing that you can use different kinds of motors. You can, so why are we doing this? Well, I have a power station. I was wondering if I could build an e-bike around the power station. Now we're limited to what we can do with the power station. Yes, I can use it to charge up e-bikes on your route. You can just take it along. So that's one way of doing it. There's only a 10 amp, 12 volt output. So we can't use that. We can't use USBs, obviously. The only real output you can get out of the power station is from the 120 volt inverter. So I know what you guys are thinking. Why not just tap into the internal lithium iron phosphate battery? So our battery internally, 22.4 volts. This voltage is a little low. The inverter will provide about 700 watts. So, this is where I came up with this idea. I'm just on my chainsaw powered bike here. <laughs> it's not super fast. Sounds different than a regular e-bike. So this is just science, this is engineering. That's what this channel is about. It's all just about learning. 